Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and in this video I'm going to talk about the greenhouse effect. And when you talk to people about the greenhouse effect, they tend to be pessimistic. But we really need the greenhouse effect on our planet. And so let me throw the sun out here, and then let's throw out the earth. And so we're going to make this a black body. What does that mean? We're going to make this an object that absorbs all the light that's coming from the sun. So this is just theoretical. And so the scale is all wrong. The earth is too big. It's way too close to the sun. But if we were to just imagine the earth as a black body, we should have a temperature of around 5.3 degrees Celsius. Now you know this if you're on the moon and you were to look back at the earth, we can see it. So we know the earth is not a black body. We know that it's reflecting a lot of that light, about 30% of it. And so if we were to take into account that reflection of light, then the earth should be around negative 18 degrees Celsius. And this would be awful. All the water on the planet would be frozen. There's no way that life is going to be able to exist. And so what else do we have to add to this model? We have to add an atmosphere and the greenhouse effect. And what that does is it keeps heat close to the earth. And so we should and we do have a temperature of around 14 degrees Celsius. And so that difference is just accounted for using the greenhouse effect. And so we really need the greenhouse effect. Where does it get its name? It comes from the greenhouse. And so how does a greenhouse work? Well, visible light is going to be coming through the glass itself. And so it's going to be reflected back and it just goes right out of the greenhouse. You can look in a greenhouse and you can see things inside it so you know the light is being reflected. Now let's look at light that is then converted into infrared radiation or heat. What happens to that? Well, when it hits the glass, some of it is going to be lost as uh, heat to the environment, but some of it is refracted or bent back into the greenhouse. And that gets bounced around, we lose some of it, and so that heat is going to stay inside the greenhouse effect. Now if we can limit convection or the movement of the air, then we can keep all that heat inside a greenhouse. It works a little bit different in our atmosphere. And so how does our atmosphere keep heat close to it? Well, let's look at what the atmosphere is made up of. It's mostly nitrogen, like 78% of it. We've got about 21% oxygen. We've got around 1% argon. And then there's this really tiny little black band right here and that's going to represent everything else. Now water can vary and so we could have up to 4% of the atmosphere dealing with water but we still have this really faint line here that you can't even see. And so what's inside there? Well a lot of the greenhouse gases are inside there. And so what does that list contain? It contains water vapor but it also contains carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, ozone which is is actually really important and then chlorofluorocarbons and a lot of those are produced by humans and these are all greenhouse gases. And so how do they hold heat in? Well I'm going to use a simulation to show you this. This is a PHET simulation um, and so I'll put a link in the video description down below. I would encourage you to go there and check it out but let's take a look at that. First thing you should look at is how visible photons and infrared photons interact with the gases that we're going to find in the atmosphere. And so in this simulation we've got methane, we've got carbon dioxide, water vapor, nitrogen, and oxygen. So let me throw all of those into just a fake atmosphere. On the left side we've got an emitter that is going to give off either uh, visible radiation, light we'll call that, or infrared radiation. And so what do you think is going to happen when we hit these all with light? Assume that molecules can't move around. Well if you watch this as the light moves through it, nothing happens. In other words it's not affecting those molecules at all. Okay, so what happens if we turn off light and then we turn on infrared light? So this is going to be infrared photons. You should make predictions about what you think is going to happen. So let's turn this on now. So you can see that some of that heat is being bent and refracted and it's actually coming back from where it was. Can you see a pattern of what molecules are vibrating? So let's see, I see methane is definitely vibrating right here. What else do we see? So there's another methane. Um, I see carbon dioxide, so a carbon dioxide right here is moving. And what's the other big one that's moving? That would be water. So the water is vibrating and re-emitting that heat. If you look at things like uh, nitrogen gas or oxygen gas, they're unaffected by heat. And so what does that tell us? Well, if our atmosphere was just made up of nitrogen and oxygen, Light would come in, heat would go out, and we would have a really cold temperature on our planet. So we need these greenhouse gases. Let's take a look at how that affects uh, our atmosphere at the level of the atmosphere itself. And so what I've done is turn back the clock a little bit so we're in the last ice age. This shows our greenhouse gas compositions. 
Now this is thousands of years ago and so you might think like who was keeping track of greenhouse gases at that point? Well, nobody. If we look at ice cores, what you'll see is there are layers in the ice cores where we had summer, winter, summer, winter, summer, winter, and so you can count back and figure out how long ago it was. And then little bubbles of the atmosphere are trapped in the ice. So we can take out a section, we could add it to a mass spectrometer, and we can figure out what's the composition. So we could see how much carbon dioxide, methane, or dinitrogen oxide, these are all greenhouse gases. A water actually we don't know because I mean the ice is water but we can figure out what the composition was back then and so what did it look like back then we had a lot more uh, ice for sure and so watch what happens as a visible photon hits the ice it just bounces right back again and so as visible photons hit the ice it's reflected back into space so we're not getting that heat energy if you look at photons then that are hitting the soil they're being converted into infrared photons and so we think of that as heat and so as they move up they're doing this kind of crazy dance some of them get refracted some of them get bent back towards the atmosphere and some eventually move off into heat but since we have a low level of these greenhouse gases we're not holding much of them to the planet and so this area Area, we would have a temperature of around 34 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's move forward a little bit. So take a look at these greenhouse gas compositions. I'm going to move forward to 1750. And so what do we see then? Higher amounts of greenhouse gases. So these were actually recorded by people. Um, so we have higher amounts. So what do we see now is an increase in temperature. Um, what's causing that? We're holding more of that heat close to the planet. What happened when we got rid of all that ice, more of that light, instead of being bent back into space, is actually being absorbed as heat. It's normal to see changes in the greenhouse gases, but let's look as we move forward from 1750 um, until today. And so especially look at these numbers right down here as we move forward. So we see huge increases in those greenhouse gases. Again, if we go from carbon dioxide, it was 280. Um, I just checked today, it's, a, it's well over 390, I think 397. We're pushing 400 parts per million. We're seeing huge increases in the other greenhouse gases. If you look at methane, for example. And so what's, what's happening with that is we're seeing increase in the greenhouse effect. And a lot of this is caused by um, greenhouse gases that we're putting into the atmosphere. And so the industrialization is really increased amount of those greenhouse gases. And what we start to get is a greenhouse that kind of builds on itself. Let me talk about two ways that that occurs. So for example, if we go back to the ice age, what happens as we start to melt the ice on our planet? Well, as we melt the ice on our planet, then there's more light being absorbed by the planet and so it's going to increase that heat. Another thing that happens up in the north that as we heat the permafrost it releases a lot of methane. What happens with that? Well it heats the earth more so it releases more methane. Or you could think of the oceans what's happening as we heat it up then more water vapor moves into the atmosphere which causes the earth get warmer and so that's going to heat up the ocean even more. And so that's the greenhouse effect. Again we need it but man-made greenhouse effect is really causing global climate change that we're going to have to deal with over our lives. And I hope that was helpful.